In 2005, the Houston rap explosion was in full effect, and it was nothing like it at the time. Hence the reason I felt like I had to do a whole breakdown video of that whole experience in rap. Uh, you can check it out if you want to in the archive. Hit the link. One of the artists who benefited from that Houston rap explosion was Mike Jones. With him gaining mainstream attention, having a double platinum album, platinum singles, and being featured on then everybody's song and projects, it, uh, he was a real big deal in 2005. But sadly, Mike Jones couldn't maintain that success because after that year, the steam would end up dying down very quickly for him. And a lot of this had to do with his issues that he was having with his label Swisher House. And Twisha House been around, had been around for a very long time. But by the 2000s, they would end up, you know, legitimately starting, turning themselves into an actual label instead of just like a rap crew or whatever. And they would start signing artists under actual contracts. And one of the artists being Mike Jones. Now, if you know your history, then you remember when Mike Jones got with the label, uh, as far as like 2002, he was a team player. And, you know, in every interview, every freestyle and et cetera, he was screaming out, you know, Swisher House. He was always repping Swisher House, you know, no matter what. And as Mike Jones was putting in the work on the mixtape scene and his buzz was starting to get bigger and bigger, the indie label Swisher House was taking meetings with all major labels at the time, trying to see which label would be a perfect fit for them to, you know, get into their mainstream. Now, meanwhile, they were still putting out underground tapes and you know, had artists like Mike Jones, Magno, and Paul Wall touring all through the South and Midwest. But by 2004, Swisher House would end up inking a deal with Asylum slash Wonder Brothers. Their first major label project that was scheduled to drop was Who Is Mike Jones, which was Mike Jones' debut album. Now, they would use the single Still Tipping, which had been out for like a year or so before it actually caught fire in the mainstream airways. Now, according to G-Dash, who's one of the CEOs of Swisher House, by the time Asylum came with the deal, Mike Jones had three months left on his original Swisher House contract. So when Mike Jones signed the deal with Asylum, that would end up extending his Swisher House contract because of the deal and the partnership between Swisher House and Asylum, which basically slated Mike to deliver five albums for his Swisher House slash Asylum contract. And this was the same deal Paul Wall would end up signing as well. Now, I don't know if Mike Jones knew what he signed or thought that because he had a couple of months left on his contract that he was no longer with Swisher House, but either he will find out later, but at the end of the day, things would go downhill and it would take a turn for the worse. So now that Mike Jones is on the promotional run, you know, preparing to drop his debut album, Who Is Mike Jones? He's making appearances on BET, um, MTV. He's making all these appearances, doing interviews. And it was very noticeable that he was no longer saying or screaming Swisher House like he had been doing, you know, years prior. It was all about Ice Age Entertainment, which was his label. And even doing his performances, he wouldn't say anything in Swisher House. He wasn't wearing shirts, anything. And he even got to a point where he was no longer wearing his Swish House chain. Uh, it was just strictly Ice Age. Now, there could be many reasons why Mike was trying to separate himself from the label that helped build him. Uh, there could be many reasons. Either he found out that the truth about his contract because he thought he was going to be out of it. And once he signed the deal with Asylum, he found out that, oh, I'm still tied to these folks for five albums. Or... It could be he was letting the big wigs at Asylum slash Warner Brothers get in his ear. And I think it was a little bit of both, you know? I think Mike Jones thought that he was going to use Swisher House to help build his name up and then thought he was going to be able to separate and get on down. And they were like, uh-uh-uh. No, no, sir. Well, you ain't finna get away from us that easy. And, you know, it's kind of understandable because... Why it's like damn they're biting the hand that that was feeding you. This was the label that signed you. They didn't have to. They didn't have to do so. Yeah, I think Swish House was already a little uh, a legendary thing anyway, way before Mike Jones came along. 
So they help put you out. They help build build your buzz that you got. They didn't have to do that. So that's that is understandable. It's like, man, we gonna like you ain't finna get away from us. All this money and all this time we invested in to making you big, we not you're not finna get away from us like that. Thinking that you're gonna blow up off our name and our logo and then you get to go scot free. So that's kinda understandable. But I also believe it was the other thing too where Mike was letting those execs get into his head. Because it's been going on since the beginning of time. Now, it was also a rumor that Mike Jones was letting the fame get to his head. You know, that's, that's, that's always been a rumor that, you know, he basically let the fame get to his head and, you know, the ego, you know, really hit him. And you can't, you, you can't really blame him, but because when you are new to mainstream fame and you've never really got attention like that, everybody don't know how to handle it. You know, a lot of people get lost in it, you know. A lot of people get lost in it very, very easily, especially even during these times. You know, you got people who will get lost in the sauce, you know, just if they go viral, you know, and they feel like they're bigger than, they just the biggest thing in the world and don't realize that, you know, this stuff is not going to last long. You know, this is easily going to be taken away from you. It's going to die down very soon. This fame, this attention, and all this is not going to last long. So that's what the rumor always was also that Mike Jones was, like, letting the fame get to his head. So so by 2006, you know, Mike Jones wanted nothing to do with Swisher House at all. He wanted to continue, you know, doing his thing with Ice Age slash Asylum. Now, Swish House had already had, it was already having issues with Asylum already because they felt like, you know, they should be able to negotiate their deal because they was able to break two platinum artists in the same year. And now they got one of the artists not wanting to be with them no more. So what Asylum did was gave Mike Jones his own deal for Ice Age. And, but he still had to give up points off each album to Swisher House as well until like for the next four albums because he was tied to a five album deal so and so switch house they they agreed to it because they were like well we don't want to deal with them no more anyway so it is what it is now when mike jones made his return you know he came out with the single mr jones in september and he came out with the video like two months later and the single, it did okay, but it didn't do enough for the major label Asylum slash Warner Brothers to say, okay, we ready to put this album out. And not to mention, I don't think that was the right time for Mike Jones to put that album out anyway, or that single, because that was leaning to the fourth quarter. And the fourth quarter, I feel like it's only uh, always meant for big acts to come out as far as the ones who do real big numbers for like three, four, five times platinum type of artists. And Mike Jones wasn't one of those type of artists. Yes, he was multi-platinum, but he wasn't established yet. And not to mention, he was going on his second album. And a lot of people know about the sophomore jinx. So I think he was he should have came out much earlier than, you know, as far as going into the fourth quarter. But the single Mr. Jones it ended up becoming a, a bigger single or bigger song for Lil Wayne than it did for Mike Jones. And that was like Lil Wayne freestyling on it. You know, it turned into the sky's the limit. People know it as Lil Wayne song more than Mike Jones song. And that's crazy. And Mike, he was promoting his next album, The American Dream. He was even promoting it on his first album. And, you know, but Mr. Jones, it failed to chart very high. So... His next single didn't come out until April of 2007, which was my 6 4 featuring Snoop Dogg and Bun B. And that single did okay as well, but Asylum still wasn't ready to push the button to drop the album. And this next single, Turning Heads, it didn't chart at all. So what they ended up doing was dropping the American Dream as an EP, and they dropped the movie with it, and that didn't come out until November of 2007. And I ain't gonna even lie, I bought the movie. And the movie was pretty cool. You know, it's much better than what I've seen with most rappers putting movies together. You know, it was pretty, I like, you know, I, I fuck with it, you know. 
but it just seemed like things was not going well for Mike Jones as far as being on his own. And I think that's where he kind of really failed it because a lot of people feel like, oh, they're ready to be on their own and have control and, you know, run a label. And it's more to just, you know, having a label, having a name and having a few artists under your or under your belt signed. You know, it's more to it than that. And I think, you know, Mike thought the grass was going to be green on the other side because he didn't have Swisher House, you know, in control of anymore. Even though he still had to give them points off each album and stuff like that, he still had to pay them. But he no longer had them in his ear or being executive producers. And I think that's where he started to realize, like, damn, I may have messed up. My plans is, like, kind of backfiring. Now, he did have a single, as far as Drop and Get Me 50 with Hurricane Chris, that single did pretty well. And that, they still wasn't ready to push the album out. And I guess they wanted another steel tipping. That's exactly what they wanted. They wanted another steel tipping. They wanted another back then. And I guess that's what, you know, Mike Jones wasn't delivering to them. So now heading into 2008, you know, Mike Jones would end up dropping two singles, uh, Cuddy Buddy and Next to You. And as of to date, both of those singles are not platinum. And they still wasn't pushing the button for them. They wouldn't, like, feel like it was ready. And it's like, damn, what more can he do? Because, you know, Mike Jones has always said it was the politics of the label that was you know, stopping him from releasing music. And, you know, I can believe it. I can believe that, you know, as far as the politics. But I still feel like, you know, Mike should have... I think he should just slow down on trying to separate from Swisher House because I feel like if he still had them in his corner, he still he could have dropped he could have been on his third album by this time. He could have been on his third album. And it's just like and then he didn't really drop his next album until 2009, April of 2009. I still remember when that album came out, The Voice. And you got to think it's 4 years after your major label a uh, debut comes out. And when that album came out, it didn't do well at all. It only sold 25,000 the first week. And as of today, it's at uh, only 200,000 copies. And by 2010, uh, Mike Jones was no longer uh, under asylum. So he, I think he was still tied in the Swish House, but he was no longer with asylum. And this is the reason why we never got another Mike Jones album ever again. We will get plenty of mixtapes and we will get plenty of singles, but we never got a Mike, another Mike Jones album afterwards. Because, you know, it was a lot of legal stuff going on between him and Swisher House. And it was just a lot, a lot of stuff that, you know, he was going through. And not to mention, I feel like the situation with Trey didn't help anything in it. That kind of made the situation worse. That was like in 2008 at the Ozone Awards. I remember when that popped up. And, you know, it, for years, Swisher House and Mike Jones have been going back and forth over the legal issues uh, pertaining to his music and things like that. Even though Mike Jones still gets paid, you know, very, very well, you know, because he shows it as far as his paperwork. And he's still doing shows, regardless of what people may think. You know, but I just think... Where, uh, with Mike Jones, he bit the hand that fed was feeding him, and I think that he should have just what he should have done was just rolled that contract out. So therefore, you know, by the time that he was able to get away from Swisher House, contract wise, and he would have been still established. He st- like he still is a, a, held as a legend in Texas, and he could still do, like you know st- he still do shows because he had a lot of early hits. But it's just a simple fact that he felt like he was ready to be on his own as a boss. And I think that's where he really failed it. You know, he really didn't think his, his whole plan backfired. His whole plan backfired. So it's been an ongoing battle between Mike Jones and Swisher House. I don't know if they got it, you know, done. Or they sell the ties or they, you know, resolved everything. Because you got to think, by the time Mike Jones was, uh, released his second album in 2009, Paul Wall was there about to be out of his contract. He, he was on his third or fourth album. 
And because you know he was in a five album deal, he released four albums, and their last, the last album on his contract was the greatest hits album. That's what they always do for the major labels. Like they, they're like, okay, your fifth album, okay, we'll just hit it, we'll just put out the greatest hits album, and then you done. Paul Wall rolled his contract out, and by the time it was 2010, he was an independent artist, and that's exactly what Mike Jones should have done. But you know, it is what it is. But I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this video. Y'all let me know in the comments uh, what you feel like really happened as far as with Mike Jones' career. Do you think he should have just stayed with Swish House and just rolled his contract out, or do you think he did the right thing by separating from them? Just let me know in the comments, man. It's your boy Moss, and I'm out. Choo!